Welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello, and today I've got a friend on the show, Sam Janung. Sam, welcome. Hey, how's it or going, Chris? Samuel. <laughs> Is that like your day when you're in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, my mom, my mom would say Samuel Duncan, you know, the oh, whole yeah. thing. That's when you know you're in trouble. That's like me being called Christopher. No one ever does that. It's always Chris. And I, I sometimes forget my whole name's Christopher, unless someone's like, you know, yelling at me or my legal name pops up and I'm like, oh yeah, got to change all the documents. You know, I'm sure you, you deal with that too, right? You write Sam right. and the attorney's like, no, you got to do Samuel. Sorry. <laughs> it's like close friends, relatives, you know, stuff yep. like that. Well, but outside of that, it's, it's Sam. It's funny how it goes, but I mean, the legal names are important, especially with real estate and contracts and all that. I got to be careful with, with it. And I'm sure you do as well. But uh, today we're going to be talking about everything you're up to, how we met. We've kind of stayed in touch. It's one of those things where we watch each other's journeys from afar, but I don't think we had really spoken until a couple of weeks ago over Zoom, probably since like high school, right? Been a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Your, your journey outside of high school, you know, the, the Dubai stuff and kind of what you're doing with real estate. And I'd always said, you know, he's killing it, killing it, killing it. <laughs> finally reached out and yeah, we got on a Zoom call. I'm glad we did that. Same here, same here. I was pleasantly surprised because like, like we kind of talked about last time, um, you have this image in your mind of how someone used to be when you knew them. Like, I think I told you the memory I had of us was like, we'd go to Thai Cottage with our friend James and like we'd do like a little sleepover and play beer pong and stuff. Uh, like as high school kids, right? We would do those little things every now and then. And now when we got a chance to catch up, I'm like, man, your business and you're investing in real estate and you got a property already um, in Durango, I believe. Is that where your house, your property was that you own? So we own two, two places, a primary residence out in Montgomery, te Texas, that me and my wife live uh, currently. And then we have our second place. It's a condo in Durango. Sweet. Uh, we just purchased that in June. Yeah, and, June. and then you've got a couple other business ventures as well, which we can touch on. But um, what, what's your main focus these days? I mean, I know you just opened up a store. Feel free to dive in and share it. And then we can kind of jam on that, see what your struggles are, see what your biggest lessons have been and all of that. Cool. Cool. Yeah, man. So uh, biggest focus right now is um, I'm the chief operating officer and co-owner co of a business called the Cultured Cannabis Co. Um, it's it's owned by a mother company called the Cultured Family LLC. Okay. And um, yeah, we do uh, you know just your typical storefront uh, dispensary out in Colorado. It's in Mancus, so it's it's just outside of Durango. Um, we have a grow as well, cultivation. Uh, so it's it's kind of small batch, real like real focused, um, both sides of it. So. On the dispensary side, we've been really trying to hone in on product, right? And just kind of that and customer experience. Um, so those two things combined, I mean, we've been seeing a lot of traction. Cultivation, um, it's kind of gone through a full-on facelift. Uh, we kind of bought it from a mom and pop shop, which, um, you know, they were done. They didn't want to invest anything into it. So we uh, we bought it because of that. We got it at a really good price. and Cool all the opportunity to kind of jump in and uh, really kind of grasp it and and see where we could kind of um, you know kind of fix the business if you will I mean it wasn't like it was broken but uh, kind of get the business where we wanted it I guess is better um, and now it's gone to where we're on our last room uh, the building looks like a brand new building I mean this thing could awesome. be featured in you know high times if we wanted it to be and, uh, <laughs> It's pretty sick, man. I, yeah, we're excited. We're we're pumped about it. And um, uh, outside of that, you know, we have um, stuff that we're focusing on that uh, it's kind of exciting. We're we're trying to jump into the edible slash like concentrate game, which um, you know we've been really focused on the customer side. So like business to customer relationship of what we do is it's it's pretty direct it's just literally in one building so we don't have to do much it's just you know we have the grow in one building with the dispensary you don't have to like logistically it's pretty easy easy and close uh, yeah right so now we're we're trying to jump out of that kind of um we're trying to detach the dispensary from the production side of it if you will and um with that being said we have a lot next to our 
lot that we're on right now. So we're going to try and kind of develop a new space for the store, kind of have customers just go to their own space and then um, be able to have more production side of it where we're looking at like a wholesale B2B or, you know, business to business side of where we're actually selling across the state, kind nice. of trying to approach the state uh, in a sense of like anyone and everyone can be our customer, right? And we don't want to yeah. hit where we're hitting minimums daily, you know, they, there's no minimums at that level. So we're trying to approach our business at that level now. And it's exciting, man, because, uh, you know, we kind of hit one of those points where, yeah, we're getting revenue and we're seeing money come in, but it's kind of like, it's not fixed, right? Because you can have yeah. better days than others, but you can see where you're not going to get over that whatever mark, right? We don't want that mark that we're about to hit this year. It's not exciting in the sense of our goals. So we're trying to see what's there and it's exciting to kind of jump in this little tangent um, now that we kind of see the industry for about a year now. Yeah, that's cool. Cause as you start to learn, you start to get new ideas. Like you said, you know, B2B, maybe you guys could help cultivate stuff and supply it to other shops around the, uh, the state, right? I'm sure that's where you're headed. So that way they can be selling your stuff. You can be getting bulk orders. Um, and I've never really been like a huge part in that industry or anything. Like, I'm not just saying it because my mom's probably listening, but like, honestly, even in high school, I just never got into it. Uh, the parties and stuff, I was always good at saying no. And I mean, there's rules and in, in regulations in Texas that obviously are different in Colorado, but I had some friends in town and we went to a dispensary um, and it was just really interesting because we went there like 10 minutes before they closed. And of course, the rules, you can't really pay with card. It's cash only. They got ATM machines in there. And man, they had eight people working there at like 11 o'clock PM or whenever they closed. I think it was 11 o'clock or maybe midnight or something. And you just see right. them emptying out the registers. And I'm like, dang, that is a lot of freaking cash. I can't imagine the amount of money that they're pulling in. Plus to be able to afford to have like eight people working there that late on a weekend night. And I saw they were like packaging everything up. They were locking it up and securing it in the back, I guess, in case anyone were to break in. And I'm just like, man, that's that's pretty amazing to see like how far that industry has come. Um, and I know it's been something that a lot of people have been hesitant to get into because of all the rules, regulations, you know, special things like cash only and ATM machines, you know, like a little inconveniences every now and then. Uh, right. So what's been one of the biggest lessons you guys have learned since you've gotten into the business? Man, um, <laughs> I'm sure you're learning every day. You're like, oh, didn't know about that law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's been, it's so funny. It's such a hard question to, to answer, really, because um, we have been learning just every day. We have, a, we have an incredible team, which is, we're lucky. Because, Did you inherit the team when you bought out the place or you brought them uh, on board? A lot of people we have brought on board, but a lot of people, I'd say it's about 60% we brought on board, 40%. Okay was there when we bought it and um cool you know people have left um and, and then have come and the people that are there right now are just incredible man and um you know one of the things i guess it would probably be the regular regulatory stuff mm -hmm. um, just making sure because it's one of those it's not that it's difficult it's more of like a ongoing stress of like hey Keeping is everything up. done is everything done are we are we good? You know, and it's yeah. like, we are good, but it's one of those things where it's kind of like that. And not only that, it's, I guess it's uh, that they change. So we just have to make sure that we're on top of it. And um, yeah, I mean, that that's most of it. And oh, man, outside of that, it's probably the, uh, the reporting requirements to oh, not yeah. the bank, but you know, the, the actual state and town itself, you, you do have quite a bit of reporting that, I mean, all of us were not used to, you know, I mean, it just, mm -hmm. it, how could you be used to this much? So <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine I was on a call yesterday for like real estate. My, my office was doing a risk management, like a mandatory annual call that they want to do just for that very reason. Cause there's so many changing regulations. And apparently, I mean, 2020 has been, a, was a crazy year with real estate. It started like really popping off in terms of transactions which means when the market's doing well, I'm sure similar to like the cannabis industry, more and more competitors rush in and less people know what they're doing because there's a lot of newer people. So they were talking about the similar thing of like, 
the complaints have gone up from like 5,000 a year to 7,000 a year on real estate agents because of the way people are doing business or marketing and breaking rules that they didn't realize were rules. And I was taking notes. I'm like, dang, apparently, you know, I got to have a little logo of my broker in my email signature. Otherwise I'm marketing, you know, if I'm sending a real estate email and it doesn't show that I'm in a brokerage, that could be like a finable offense or something like that. And a lot of people break the rules without even knowing it. And maybe you'll get a slap on the wrist, but still it's best to be safe and really just stay up to date on all the regulations to avoid fines and like lawsuits and stuff that could happen down the road if you don't have everything buttoned up right now. So I kind of get it from that other industry standpoint of just staying up to date on everything and surrounding yourself with good people who can kind of keep you in the loop as well. It's funny how something as small as just your email signature can uh, <laughs> I can make a big difference. You know. Yeah. Cause they were saying that could really take down a brokerage office. And I know we were kind of DMing about that. Like what would it take to start a brokerage office? Um, in my office that I'm a part of, it's based in Houston, 700 plus real estate agents, but they were like, this is something that could take an office down because if, if Trek, the Texas real estate commission were to pursue charges or kind of fine you for every offense, I think they said it was like three to $5,000 per offense. So if they really crack down on that and like most people are not doing the right things, I mean, that that's a lot of money to be able to fork over just for something that most people probably weren't even aware of, you know? Yeah, just how many emails are going back and forth. And yeah, right, real estate advice and like not even explaining that you're a real estate agent and you're representing one person. But how, I assume, do you guys have like a, like a legal person that you work with or someone who helps you interpret all the changes that are happening? Or do you just kind of partner with a local attorney? I'm just curious to know about how that works for you guys. So it, the, the MED is the, the state um, regulator, right? Okay. And they are actually a part of the Department of Revenue for Colorado, uh, for us, right? And yeah. um, they're they're incredible about answering questions, you know? So um, for the most part, we try not to bring, uh, we, we do have an attorney, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we try not to bring him in. Um, he's it gets expensive fast, right? <laughs> he's um, like, okay, 10 minute call, that's like a thousand bucks. <laughs> You know, but uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things where if we need to use him, we will. Uh, he's great. He's awesome. Um, side note, kind of funny. He uh, we we found out he was uh, Willie Nelson's attorney, and uh, we we're kind of, kind <laughs> That's of cool. it's one of those funny uh, relations. But anyways, um, yeah, we we try and take in everything that we see. They send out emails all the time, right? So it's it's more about just staying on top of emails, reading it, not ignoring it. You know, they, they're really good about kind of sending information out. So as long as you're checking your emails, really reading what's in it. And if you have a question, just call them, you know, I mean, be proactive about it. Don't act like you know it because a lot of this stuff is written to like, you know, their own interpretation, like any law or regulation typically is. And I'm sure you're very used to that and the contracts that you deal with but um yeah it's uh that's that's kind of what we we do to to go off of uh new regulations being made i mean it's it's pretty simple though i mean in the sense of finding it and, and being aware of it so. yeah that's helpful that they're super uh, proactive in terms of answering questions and, and all of that kind of thing because like you said it can be very difficult to interpret something every time i have some legal documents and it's 30 pages long i'm just like oh my gosh I got to read this and then try to understand it. And then they, they word it so complicated. Like, can't they just write it as if they're writing to third graders so that we can all understand. I never understood that, you know, like in witness of here of, or here to, I'm like, who, who writes like this? Come on. Everyone talks like this. I know it. Yeah. I'm like, this, this is like the Babylonian times that the way that they're <laughs> writing as if it's some Royal decree. But anyway, that's a side note. As long as you're, there's something that you, that you said there that I wrote down and you said, Staying on top of emails, not ignoring it. That's really important because like that's, I almost missed the email of that class they were doing, for example, because like usually I ignore it. I'm like, whatever, it's just a newsletter. But because I took two seconds to look at it and read through it, I'm like, oh, it says mandatory. Like they're going to want us to go in there and get credit for this uh, so that they know that we're aware of the things that we need to know in order to protect us from legal action and, and fines and stuff like that. So it's not something we necessarily want to do, but it's something that we kind of have to do if we want to be following the rules and playing it safe. 
Yeah, yeah, kind of staying ahead, right, with the with the game instead of behind it and trying to figure it out. So, exactly. No, I, mean, I love that. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely helped. So, how's everything been on your day to day stuff? Like, do you guys just have set hours? Um, you kind of have the right staff and rotating schedule. Has that been pretty um, pretty manageable, or has that been hit or miss? Like, wait, both people want vacation on this day. Who's going to run the store? Like, how's that been logistically? So people are people, right? And, <laughs> I'm uh, sick. I don't feel good. <laughs> get all of that. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, our team is just incredible. Uh, that, that even goes down to the employees, right? Not even the, just the managers I'm talking about. But um, my, uh, our managers, our store manager, uh, Chandler and uh, Dave, both of them are just, you know, spot on. They call us. I got calls last night at nine o'clock at night he's like picked up i'm in bed you know like an old man um, <laughs> and uh he's like hey uh what what's wrong you know i'm like i'm just in bed dude you know and he's just like <laughs> it's like why are you in bed so early like I'm calling, I'll stop calling. <laughs> <laughs> that is but, funny he's got a pro he probably has a totally different schedule where he's like oh my gosh going to bed at nine you must be sick or something right. Oh yeah, he's he's still at the shop. They're doing inventory, you know, doing whatever. And it's like, oh, you're in bed. Yeah, yes, man. And <laughs> it's just they're they're great, dude. Yeah, they they give us a call whenever whenever something's up. If it's good, bad, whatever it is, you know, they uh they never kind of they never act on their own. It's it's just you know it's it's really incredible the team kind of that that we've built from um from scratch a little bit. I mean, now it's kind of taken over. It's that 60, 40, like I was saying earlier. So, yeah, that's cool. So what's been something that you're trying to work on or to improve? Cause I feel like every day in our businesses, we have stuff that we're trying to get to make better. Even if everything's fine, you know, I, I still want to improve stuff in my business every day. Is there anything like that for you right now that you're focusing on? Yeah, you know, operationally, um, we want to get to a point where there's a cookie cutter model here, right? And I just think that for expansion, that's necessary. And um, we're not there yet. So that's, that's kind of a focus that I've had quite a bit on. Um, gosh, that and uh, we've been really working with our accounting firm to, to find out the best way to account for daily expenses, especially when we're using a bunch of cash. Yeah. Uh, so those two things have been, you know, the, the daily focuses, if I was to sit down and really just work on the business itself, which is rare now because of just the things that I've had to start working on, like taxes and um, unemployment insurance reporting and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a, uh, you know, I could have 20 hats on, but it's, it's exciting because we're doing it for ourselves. So it's like, okay, yeah. you know, what bring on the hats, but uh, yeah, when I, when I do sit down to focus on the business, that's, that's kind of what we've been trying to improve on, which is getting the processes in place, writing them down, getting it to where everyone understands the processes. It's not just the upper level that, okay, this is what it is. You know, it's like, no, down to like the employees, they understand what you're trying to do. They understand why, why you're doing it, what you're trying to accomplish. You know, like all of those things um, is is like I guess the priority right now because the the top level like Chandler, Dave, uh, my brother, he works for us. Um, you know, the the people that are closer to us, if you will, um, the guys that we kind of brought in, they understand the dream because they've heard the, the dream for a while now. It's not the first time they're hearing about it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they've kind of seen the dream come alive and uh, it's, it's kind of catching on with everyone because you can, you can see how happy everyone is when they're at work and just the level of teamwork and people are coming up with ideas and just, you know, it's that level of excitement, even at a retail just level of, you know, it's, it's cannabis retail. I'm not trying to downplay it, but it is what it is. And people are actually really excited about it. So we, we feel like the direction we're going in is really, really cool. You know, if we're able to make a job like this really exciting and, um, you know, we, we do hopefully we'll have all of this kind of in the works soon where we're comfortable, I should say, with our processes to be able <laughs> to expand, you know? Yeah. So. 
One thing I, I think I heard it on a podcast or there's also a book called built to sell. If you've ever heard of that. And um, I think the guy's name is John Wirelo, but basically he talks about building like a franchise model, like McDonald's. I mean, a 16 year old can go in there, make the burger exactly the same as the person who's been there for like two years right. in the first week, because they have everything documented. It's all super simple. They've got images of Here's the three steps, grab this, do this, put it in there for 10, for five minutes or whatever, and you're done, you know, package it up and, and ship it out to the customer or, or out to the drive through window. So when you have those processes and you make, you said cookie cutter, that's a great way of, of putting it. You're able to, as you already know, I'm just kind of talking for the audience. You're able to replicate right, right. that and share that with someone else where they can get a store up and running and operational, hopefully in a week or two without a whole, a whole bunch of hiccups or like, where does this go? How do we do this? Like it's already there and done. You're just copying and pasting the model into a different location. Right. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully just to backtrack, hopefully have more time to focus on the business itself. Right. Cause like exactly. uh, kind of what's going to make it grow in the first place and uh, overall going to make the business better. So hopefully we don't have to keep focusing on this kind of stuff for, for super long. It's all hasn't even been a year yet. So we're, we're excited with where we're at. We're, we're almost at that million dollar mark in revenue, which is incredible for us. We're excited, you know, um, one store and the population in our city is like 5,000, you know, so it's, <laughs> it's one of those things where uh, we're, we're excited for the future and what it's going to be for us in the sense of we're, we're super young. We're none of us are 30 yet. Um, we're in it for the, we call it the long game. Right. And uh, yeah, it's all about building something that's strong and going to last. So yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Well, it sounds like you guys are up to a lot of cool stuff. I mean, not even in your thirties, any of you just yet. And I mean, about to hit the million dollar mark and that kind of goes to show that you don't have to be in some huge city or huge town to, uh, to like be successful. And there's actually, there's a, an article called like a thousand true fans. It's like a blog post or something. And I've been telling people about that as well, because a lot of times we feel we need a million followers or thousands of customers, tens and thousands of customers to get to that status. In this article or blog post really says you just need a thousand true fans that are willing to buy your product without even knowing about it or like pre-ordering your book and seeing you speak in, con you know, on stage at a conference, like a thousand true fans is all you need to truly be successful. And so even in your small town of whatever you said, four or 5,000 people, you guys are hitting those numbers. So I can only imagine once you replicate it and you get that cookie cutter model and you go to a bigger place, that's just going to be way more people coming through the store. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. You hit it right on the head, man. I mean, I, I, I had a teacher back in the day, uh, gosh, I forget what class it was exactly, but he always <laughs> said, repeat customers, you know, the, the one-offs are great. That's awesome. Repeats where it's oh, at. Every day. That would be great. But you know, the repeat is, is definitely where you're going to win. So especially in retail. Yeah, definitely. When you can get people coming back and, and purchasing more and word of mouth, bringing friends along, right. Telling people how amazing your product or your service is. Right. That's how, how it really spreads much more quickly than just trying to do paid advertisements or coupons or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's it. That's it. It's good stuff, man. So What's uh what's something that you want to share for anyone out there who's wanting to start their own thing? Is there something like a mistake that they should avoid or something you wish you had done differently? You know, um, not not anything I would have done differently. Um, I think it's really just if you have a strong idea and you 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 have a strong passion for something and you you think you actually have something, you know, do it. Just like the the minute I got my resignation letter to my last job off my back. And uh, I really actually focused on me and my goals. And, you know, we, we hadn't had the business when I resigned. That was, that was when we started the actual process of jumping into a, an LOI and, you know, really getting an APA going and, and just doing the whole thing. So it wasn't even promise that we would have this business or we had to still negotiate everything and do our due mm -hmm. diligence and i'd say just do it man like that you know the nike term it's <laughs> just 
just to get out there and do it. Cause if you don't, I mean, you're wasting time. And, you know, I don't know. I've, I've never been happier. I haven't even been paid from this business yet. And it's, it's one of those just having a blast. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome. So I've been able to focus, like you said, on the real estate stuff, which I've wanted to do for a really long time. I've, I've been able to focus on my fighting stuff, which, you know, again, really wanted to be just a professional athlete in general for a really long time. So hopefully that works out kind of focusing on that at the same time. And, you know, I have my family, so it's really actually given me the freedom of, okay, I want to take my family somewhere on a Monday. You know, it's like, okay, I can do that. You can do that now. <laughs> yeah. Stuff done and you know, I don't have a dude calling me and whatever. And so I, I, I appreciate my old business that I worked for. It wasn't mine. It was my, my family's. And then we sold to a private equity firm, but um, that, that taught me a lot. It just taught me that also corporate wasn't my thing, um, at least not to work for a corporation that was not mine. So right. um, you're way more yeah. incentivized to actually do all the stuff when you're not just getting paid the same, you actually have like infinite potential, you know, like you, you get more sales, you're going to increase your own net worth as well as the net worth of everyone, all the owners and the investors in the business. So it, it's a lot easier to get motivated to take action versus like, Hey, do this because I said, so by the way, I'm not giving you a raise because times are tough, you know? <laughs> Right, right. You know, and um, fixed income is great. You know, like it really is it's stability. Awesome. Nothing bad to say about it at all. Um, if you need it and you have it and it's good and you it works for you, like I love that. Uh, stick with it. If you can do something on the side and make residual income work, like yeah, do it. You know, that's what I. You know, it's just whatever you do, like just do it. You know, if you're if you want to do it. So, yeah, cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I posted this on my story the other day. I don't know if you had seen it, but I was pretty much on that call I was on yesterday. There's this one lady asking questions and she's like super nervous all the time, like afraid to get sued or get in trouble. And I look up, I can see all this stuff, public information on like how many real estate deals she's actually done. And she only did one all year in 2021. And I'm like, she's probably on these calls, which are two or three hours. I think maybe every two weeks or once a month. I bet she's been on every single call asking questions, wondering which insurance she could get, how to protect herself, how to make sure someone doesn't fall through the attic so she might not get sued or whatever. And I look up her production and she only did one deal all year. And I posted on my story, so many people spend 98% of their time learning and figuring things out and waiting for the right moment and only 2% of the time taking action. They really need to flip that. They need to learn and like kind of figure things out a little bit, like study and read for 2% of the time, 98% of the, of the time needs to be action. And that's where the real lessons happen, right? You're not going to learn that rule that you accidentally broke until you actually do it. And they're like, Hey, here's a warning. Don't do that again. And you're like, Oh, let's update our process. So we don't get fined for that. Right. Versus right, sitting on the right. sidelines, waiting for that perfect moment and never doing anything. Uh, so that's something that I think a lot of people need to hear because a friend of mine replied to that and was like, man, this is so true. I wish I had started sooner. I was that person who was just sitting and waiting and learning and never taking action, right? So I love that you guys said, you know, just do it, take action, learn. Um, and you're having more fun than you ever have before. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, I love that point, man. Uh, it's so funny. Um, I was making a joke with, with Matt, one of the owners the other day, and I just said, yeah, you know, we didn't know any of the reporting that was needed at all. Like, zero. we were fine. We figured it out. <laughs> zero bit of the reporting. We had no idea we needed to do. And um, it's cool. Like, your state agency wants to get paid. So they're going to help you pay them. You know, like, that's yeah. the whole point of the state agency. So, they're like, going to be very nice unless you don't pay them for a long time. Then you might start seeing a little more aggressive, uh, passive aggressive emails. Yeah, just, just write that down from earlier that. Check your emails. <laughs> oh, I promise. You're, you can start a business. Like 98% of it is just making sure you check and read those important emails, especially from those governing bodies where you can get fined. And I mean, they have a little more leeway. Obviously, they could like shut down a business or or whatever. So those are the emails you don't want to ignore. You can ignore the email newsletters that people put you on or advertising campaigns, but maybe set a rule. I've been doing this in Gmail. If I get a certain um, email from a person, you can set a rule to like flag it or star it. And then I have all my starred emails jump to the top of my inbox. 
That way, if I get 50 emails in a day and only two of them get starred, I know those are the ones that are most important and the rest are like FYI, or I'm just copied on it or something like that. Yeah, yeah, prioritizing. I like that because, I mean, emails do come in by the dozens sometimes. <laughs> stuff to weed through them. I get it. Totally. There's a lot of them. There's definitely a lot of them. Well, dude, we talked about some, some great stuff here in terms of starting a business and getting it cookie cutter so you can scale it and grow it and how you're, you're learning, you're enjoying the team. Uh, is there anything we missed? Anything else you'd like to share before we let people know where to find you and where to connect with you? Man, um, I don't think so. You know, I just appreciate you having me on here. For sure. A um, lot <laughs> chance to be able to kind of share what we're doing. It's exciting stuff to us. So we hope it's exciting for everyone. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping to do some cool stuff in the industry in the sense of technology and uh, kind of bring in data to the customer. So, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for us. That, that we're, we're trying to do, you know, some cool new things in the industry. That's good. Innovation's always great. And I mean, you, you can never rule out the small guys that are just getting started because that's where the real change happens versus people who get comfortable. They've been doing it this way for so long. The, the motivation to innovate kind of dies versus someone who's like newer in that journey and, and hungrier and more, more motivated to actually step outside their comfort zone. So I can't wait to see what you guys do. Uh, where can our yeah. audience go to connect with you and to check out your website and just see what you guys are up to? So um, we are in Mancus, Colorado. So if you're near that Southwest corner, come check us out. We have a storefront, um, tiny little city, but it's cool. Um, you can check us out online too. Uh, if you do look us up, it's uh, just the culturedco.com. Um, I do have my own Instagram. I'm doing some cool stuff with fighting. Uh, if you do ever look me up, it's samg88. Um, the business does have an Instagram as well. Uh, it's the Cultured Cannabis Co. Um, it's all together, one word. And then, uh, yeah, outside of that, I mean, uh, it'll be the near future that we're bringing some stuff to the market. So hopefully everyone enjoys it. Like I said, I cool. appreciate it. Sounds good, man. Great, great ch chatting with you, sharing your story. And it's just so cool to see like how far you've come. Cause I mean, I've known you since the days we were little hooligans and we didn't really have much going on, you know, still live with our parents type thing. So it's really cool just to see everything you've accomplished. And uh, I appreciate you sharing your message today. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Chris. Likewise, man. And uh, take it easy. I'm sure we'll talk soon. Yeah, for sure. We'll be in touch. You got my number. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being a listener to the show and for checking out my message. If you've been here for a while. I'm especially grateful for you. But if you're new here, thank you once again for being a listener. Just wanted to let you know, I help people buy, sell, or rent real estate across the nation in the U.S. I probably could even help you across the world, but it just gets a little more difficult with time zones and setting up times to chat. If you have any questions at all, shoot me a DM on Instagram. My handle is chrisbello underscore, or you can also go to my website, chrisbello.com slash real estate. Again, that is chrisbello.com slash real estate. Happy to help any way that I can. And thank you once again for being a listener.